Well, hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Today we're gonna to do something a little different on this video. Today is actually, the day of recording this, is actually my birthday, woohoo! That's right, I'm 26. <laughs> Been a rough 26 years. <laughs> but um, since my birthday falls on a Saturday, and it's a beautiful spring day, the birds are singing, the sun's out, see things are in bloom, Ooh, that's obnoxious to spin around like that, isn't it? The family and I, we're going to go for a hike in the woods, something I love to do, love to just spend as much time in the woods as possible, and we're actually going to hunt for some morels, maybe even try to find some ramps. Kelly doesn't like ramps, I'm not a big ramp fan either, but we'll see if we can find any. All right, come along if you want. So I am by no means a professional morel hunter. So we're gonna try the south facing side of the hill first, and then we'll try the north side to see how it comes out. We had a nice rain last night, so I'm hoping maybe that helped. So we'll see how it goes. So we are at the top of our pig pasture, and Troy is planting some pumpkin seeds um, from their pumpkins last year. And the pigs are not gonna be allowed on this pasture uh, for some time. They're on a separate pasture, but you can see our fence line is along here and we're just at the top of this pasture. Um, and all of this here, all of this land here is all been dug up by the pigs in the past um, last year. And so we're gonna go ahead and get some pumpkin seeds planted and then see how those do up here. Black snake right here. Mr. Black Snake. Oh, he's a pretty good size one. <laughs> rattle on his tail. You're not a you're not a rattlesnake. <laughs> Normally they take off. He's a little aggressive this. <laughs> Alright, come on. Listen, he won't mess with it. Yeah, the snake's gonna leave. He's in a hole. Come on, Billy. Person who finds the first morel gets to eat it raw. I'm not finding one. <laughs> Can't anybody live? Cameron, yeah, your shelter's holding up pretty good. Mm -hmm. Wind hasn't taken it up. Actually, the first person that finds the rails should be the last person to get that way. If it's more, look, Guatemala growing in the middle of the road. Oh, what? Now, I had read that a lot of people find morels along. Uh, Freshly disturbed soil, so like along your roads or your trails or whatever. That's why I wanted to start it out on the road here. See if we could find anything. They like to be around oaks, which this is almost all oak trees in here. We definitely don't have a shortage of oaks. It be a good time. Menagerie of animals here. Huh? 
So we not only have a dog that likes to join us on walks through the woods, but we have two cats. Strangest thing. Hey, you can take your cat for a walk? Well, sure. Who doesn't? You can see our rooster would go with us. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> yeah, rooster. Before he got killed, a rooster used to go for us, go for a hike with us in the woods too. Strange, strange animals. Not morels. Okay, so now we're right on the, we're in the dead center of the valley. So this, of course, is south facing. This is north facing. We'll walk up the our little canyon of a creek here and see if we can see anything on either side. Box turtle hanging out in the woods today. Just chilling out. Literally. A little cool this morning. <laughs> you know, that's one thing that uh, you realize when you don't come through the woods on the side by side or on any type of equipment, you can see a lot more uh, wildlife and kind of sneak up on stuff and allows you to. Be able to slow down and take a, take a look at some things. That's why a good walk in the woods is always a good time. All right, Cam? Huh? <laughs> exactly. Some of the large stones that we unearthed with the dozer last year. Made good uh, hillside stabilization there, but it all came out of this spot. Coming down off the finger of this ridge, it is all stone right there in the dead center of the road. So it was... But all I could cut without really tearing stuff up. So we stopped there. That's why we still have a hump in our road. It goes down that way. Liam and Kelly branched out. So they're way over there. Let's see if we can see Kelly's blue shirt. There it is. Wild Kelly in the woods. Liam's there somewhere too. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, stand by that poplar. Stand by Whoa! Now that's a big poplar tree. It's a little crooked too. Big old double trunk. Surprising it's still alive being that big. Walking through our retreat area here where we have a lot of walnuts, so I don't know if the juggalone and walnuts keep morels from growing. I don't know enough about it. I could be making stuff up. While we're up here, we'll check on our creek redirect and see how it's going. It's, it's created quite a bit of a sandbar here. A little bit of water getting underneath it. So the creek was there, still there. We also have a pretty good chunk of it going that way. It comes down through here. Hopefully it's pooling and making a sandbar. It's cutting. We just need to come up here and backfill one of these days. I actually did a video about this. So I'll uh, post a link to it up here in the corner. A little fungus action going on there. This thing is really inoculated. So here's something that's always amazed me for years. It's been here, obviously, way before I've been here. Um, this is a huge white oak tree. And you can see right through the heart of it. It's a pretty good piece of cable. It has consumed that cable and has gone on living for well over 100 years, maybe more. That's definitely one that I would stay away from for the sawmill because that would trash everything. <laughs> Not quite sure what they were cabling here because I don't see any signs of an anchor anywhere else. Not even up the hill, there's some barbed wire. In fact, you can see right there's a little piece of barbed wire sticking out of that tree. 
That's the bad part about getting an old abandoned farm. You don't know what's a border tree and what isn't. Now here's some really great poplar trees. Nice and straight. Good diameter. Man, look at the size of the poison ivy vine on that sucker. It makes my skin crawl just looking at it. So if I'd go to mill that, see the size of that compared to my hand. Whew. I think it's all you need. You can see an old clearing here at one point. All of this back in the 60s was all clear. But most likely this was the edge of a pasture area here. You can see all the stones stacked up. So as the farmers would clear the land, of course, usually the kids would be required to move the stones. And yes, I'm sucking wind. <laughs> nice cherry tree. Start to bloom out. So here's a natural gas transmission line on the property. This is the back, the very back end of the property. <clears throat> so you can see it goes all the way up to that cut, that gap. And that's the, that ridge top is the edge of our property line. And the house and the barn and everything are way down that way. So we kind of have this watershed shelter so kind of as what you see along the ridge line here is roughly our property line. There's some variations there. It goes all around the horizon. And of course, way, way back down that way towards the house. So this uh, transmission line isn't, <clears throat> isn't a big concern for us. I do get notifications where they request to spray herbicide. And of course, I just tell them no, they can't and they have to oblige. So they'll come in, uh, every once in a while they'll come in either with a dozer and clear out the saplings or they'll come in and mow it. Now, the non-steep parts, I usually mow myself, like this area we're standing, I usually mow it. I didn't mow it last year, um, so it doesn't get too crazy. But the real steep parts I just leave and they usually come in with a dozer and knock the saplings out. It's funny, they have this right away that's this wide, but the pipeline is actually right here in this depression. You can see, in fact, you can see a little pin marked pipelines here, and I believe this is either a 20 inch or a 14 inch. It's a decent sized transmission line. So something you wouldn't want to hit with a dozer because that would be the end of you and everything around you. That's where the transmission line is. Yes. You guys ever seen an autumn olive bush that big? That thing is ginormous. What's crazy is my oldest, my 17 year old, he and I camped up here one time and he was probably 10. So within seven years, that thing has gotten that big. In fact, I've mowed over that multiple times with my bush hog and it just keeps coming back stronger and stronger. So you can see how those autumn olive are starting to pop up here. So I gotta get them under control. Get pigs back here, they need them. I think I figured out why I'm not a good morel hunter. I'm too busy looking at all the trees. <laughs> Heads in the clouds instead of on the ground. Check out this. Uh, this is a decent stand of walnut we have. There's quite a few walnut in through here, all the way down past our clearing and even down over the hill. There's a little clump of walnut with a crazy grapevine. Look at the size of that sucker. That's a wild grapevine and I can't even get my hands around it. That thing really is huge. So this is really the head of our watershed. You can see this small little valley that comes down through there. That just comes right off the mountain. That starts the watershed. See, there's several that come together there. And of course, this one right here that comes through our clearing is this side. So this is the back, what I call the back bowl. And used to keep this mode. In fact, I, I remember when these were just little saplings and I thought, nah, I won't mess with those. And there you go, that's what happens. But uh, 
screens up nicely and uh, of course this starts the water this is the creek that goes right past our our hoop house and our barn in the front of our property so we have full control over this watershed as far as what goes into it unless the neighbor obviously would come over and dump something over the edge but um, so we do have the ability to maintain as much clean water as we can possibly get by just keeping the riffraff out of it and making sure we don't dump stuff in it we lost Liam and Kelly at one point they went off on their own way so they're way way up on top of the mountain we heard Liam so we're gonna grab a rock here we're gonna wait for him to come down off the mountain <clears throat> well I thought Liam and Kelly had stuck together but there's Liam and he doesn't know where Kelly is. Kelly doesn't have a very good sense of direction. I think she would find her way home. But sometimes she gets turned around pretty easily. So we may have to send out a rescue party. She could end up in Logan County. The quest for Kelly begins. Loose the hounds. Liam's gonna go through the middle of the valley. Cam and I are on the north side of the valley. She's wearing a bright blue shirt. She's probably sitting at home having a drink on the front porch. And this is where we need walkie talkies. Yep, yeah, we're going to have to establish new comms, aren't we? It's like this old maple tree that's been here forever. The side's been eaten out of it. It's finally bit the dust. Of course, it falls across my road. It doesn't fall into the woods. It falls across the ground. Alright, no Kelly yet, and we're almost back to the house. Hopefully this is seeming way more dramatic than it really is. Well, there's her flip-flop. She hasn't come back yet. Nope. All right. Time to get in the side by side. Liam, did you see her? No. You really didn't see her? What? You really didn't see her? Well, did you stop and get something to drink? <laughs> All right. All right. We're going to go look for her. Make sure she's not loosed.
So what were you doing? <laughs> I couldn't leave my spot. I would get lost. <laughs> so did you find some? I did. So wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you've been here for the last half hour? Yeah. I tried whistling did and you? thought, oh my gosh, somebody could die in the woods. Nobody would ever find me. Did you hear us whistling? No. We were whistling and then we, Cam and I came back to the North Ridge. Liam came through the middle. We're like, well, you got a blue shirt on. We can't miss you. <laughs> and then just now. And I have all the animals with me. Yeah, that's what I thought. I started whistling for you and the cats got scared. They came running to me like, what's going on? Well, we went to the house and saw that your flip-flops are still there. It's like, well, she's still got her boots on. She's still in the woods. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, they're in the road. So wait, you gotta let me go first. Okay. Because I don't want you to on them. I'm missing. If I can find them. <laughs> Again. Oh. Cat sitting on him, isn't he? I was kind of afraid of it. Okay, here we go. There's one. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. Um, so here's one. I don't know that they're big enough. Here's one. Yes. Here's one. It's a bigger yep. one. It is. Here's one. The first one I see. Here's some more. Yep. Here's another one. This is the first oh, yeah. one I saw, believe it or not. Yeah. And then, come down here. Oh, step on this way. Here's one that Shelby might have broken off. There. Yep. And then you come down here and you can bunch more. Um, I can stop right where you are. Oh, yeah, I see them. Here's one. There's another. Yeah, there's another one right there. Here's a big one I marked so I wouldn't forget where they... Yeah, yeah, it's a good deal. But I don't—I remember seeing them much bigger than that. So maybe they're not—they're not ready. Do you wait till they get big? Well, they get—I think the smaller they are, maybe the tastier. I don't know enough about them. The ones that we got the very first time we picked some were like this big. Yeah, yeah, I remember um, being tall. Yeah, you see. Yeah, I think when you're supposed to pick them, you're supposed to. Well, you're supposed to kind of bang them to knock any spores out if they've got spores. Okay. Ready? So the size of that one is about that big. Pretty neat. Then, so I was staying here for a little while, and Shelby kept walking back and forth. Walking. I'm like, he's, she's going to destroy all of them. Huh. So I just, like, 10 minutes ago started walking that way. I thought, okay, I've got it marked with an X in the road, <laughs> so I can find it. I started walking that way to go back towards the house. I thought, well, I'll meet him at the house, and then maybe I can find my way back up. But then I heard the four-wheeler, so I started back this way so I could find it because I thought maybe you were coming, and I took the whole road. I started going that way. <laughs> I was like, oh, great, I can't even find yeah. the place where I was. Well, that's what I told Kim. I said, I don't think she'd get lost, but there's a chance she could end up in Logan County. I, don't, I wouldn't get lost from the house, but... To find this spot again, I didn't yeah. think. Oh, here's another. Oh, yeah, the other's one under that branch, too. Yeah. There's quite a few. You we didn't find any? No. Well, I discovered that my problem is I'm too busy looking at the trees. I'm like, ooh, that's a nice tree to mill. Ooh, that's a nice tree <laughs> to mill. Trying to find an oak? Yeah. And, uh, well, that one that was over to the side I found before any of the ones in the road. And as I got down low to look at it, I turned around and could see a bunch of them. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, this is. This makes sense because this is this is the south ridge, and so this this doesn't get as much sun. But this is the road that I scuffed up with a dozer this last summer. Really didn't turn a lot of dirt. I just kind of scratched it up to get some of the small saplings off of it. So you could probably did you did you check all the way out to the point and back, or did you no, just? No, because I just started walking that way about. Like I said, about 10 minutes ago, mark my, my trail. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, yeah. There, X marks the spot. Okay, I get it. Now we back up. <laughs> I wanted to remember where it was. I didn't run over them if we came back up in the side-by-side. Yeah. Side. yeah, that worked pretty well. It's like a treasure map. Is there? Can you drive that way or no? I can, but I obviously don't want to drive over. Well, right, but I didn't. I yeah. couldn't remember if there was a way to come up here that way. Yeah, that road's opened up. That comes right down behind the log staging area. Well, let's 
Let's just walk out unless you're Where's unless you're Liam? beat. Is he at the house? Yeah, he's at the house. We'll just walk out here and see if we can see in the road. We'll just have to be extra careful. Okay, so we were back at the bowl. Cam and I were waiting on you. We were at the, the bowl at the back of the property. And Liam comes down off the mountain, all nonchalant. And I, I said, well, where's your mom? And he said, uh, I said, well, I don't know. I said, you didn't stay with her? He's like, no, uh, she was following me, though. And I said, well, when's the last time you saw her? And he said, back at the brick pile. I said, that was an hour ago. Yeah, he left me a long time ago. Yeah, okay, we see who your friends are. Well, at least all the animals stayed with you. Yeah, so the dog and the cat stay with you, but the kid bails out on you. And then when I started whistling for you guys, there was a, a buck that was behind me started snorting. And I was like, Shelby, get it! <laughs> <laughs> so you called the deer in, but you didn't call the kids in. There's a lot of water up here. All right, I think we'll, we'll Cam and I will turn and go get the side by side, and we'll. It just takes me down to the tree, uh, log staging area. Yeah, if you want to cheat, you can turn. You, of course, if you go all the way out and then take the turn down and around, you're kind of going a long way. If you want to cheat, you can go right down this little wash, this road here, and that brings you to the boat meadow. Do you okay. want me to go with you, Dad? Yeah, that'll work. Turn? Yeah, if you want to walk with her. Yeah, if you want to walk with her, that'd be that'd be good. Let's see here, let's see if we can. Yeah. Yeah. See that little that little that old road there. That old road there will take you down to the boat meadow. Okay. If I can see the see the gravel by the sawmill down there in the valley. I can. Don't let her get lost again. I wasn't lost. You were lost. <laughs> Did you see this a road? It was at one time. One time. Don't fall. Take your menagerie with you. Okay, crisis averted there. I thought maybe I was uh, going to have to call out the real search party. <laughs> it seemed more dramatic at the time than it really is. But uh, Kelly decided... <laughs> That's what I love about her. her. Her rationale sometimes, it makes me scratch my head, but it, it was good. She had found Morel's and knew that she wouldn't be able to find that spot again, so she didn't want to leave it. So the question would have been, how long would she have waited in the woods? <laughs> boy's not ready to get some lunch so we could have been having lunch she could have been still sitting up here waiting for us so but um we're gonna we're gonna hold off picking these morels yet because again i like looking for them i'm not a big fan of eating them i've had them before they're okay but it's not like the top of my list but a good friend of mine he and his wife are coming out tonight to uh, so help celebrate my birthday we're gonna have a dinner so i think we may bring him up on the hill he's a um, professionally trained in the culinary arts let him eyeball those, and if he wants them, he and his wife can pick them and take them home and do some magic with them. Well, wow, what a difference a day makes. Yesterday it was 83 degrees, I believe, is a high, and today the high was 48. So right now it's about 40 degrees. So our friends came over uh, Saturday night, and we went up, we picked all the morels, and I think we ended up with about three pounds, three to four pounds of morels just in that one spot that we, uh, that we found. And uh, Matt and Heather, uh, they already posted, they showed some pictures of, uh, shared some pictures where they had uh, gone ahead and prepared and cooked those. So glad that worked out for them. So uh, that was fun. We, again, uh, no better way to spend my birthday than to be in the woods. Uh, even though we lost Kelly for a little bit, we did find her. So that ended in a happy ending there. Uh, but it was a good time. I really enjoy spending time out, uh, especially this time of year. All right. We'll take care, everybody.